cruise news time. And we, we got a cruise uh, company out there saying New York City. Well, if I can make it there, I can make it anywhere, baby. Uh, and also, we got a, a bunch of more cruise ships coming online. And you know how I feel about cruise ships coming online. The cruise topic of the day is this. Uh, our cruisers, our, our us as cruisers, our cruisers fools. Maybe. <laughs> cruise news. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. Uh, welcome to Sunday, the 24th of April, 1976. I hope everybody is doing good. It's it's a week after Easter, and we are rocking and rolling, and just a few rolling, rolling down the river, just a few days away, just a few days away from our cruise on the Panama Canal. I'm hyped, yo. I'm hyped. Let me talk about my hyperness. Uh, I've been recommending older videos, and somebody commented on the video yesterday. Look, uh, you, you got excited Tony on these new videos, and you got subdued Tony on the old videos, which is the real Tony. Well, guess what? They're both the real Tony. It's funny, like, that people have trouble associating that sometimes in life people are excited, and sometimes people in life are subdued, and... Uh, I realized somewhere along the way that I could be either one, uh, that I could tap into the excitement that I feel about cruising and present that to you on a daily basis, and that was the choice that I made. I like these new videos better than the old videos, but is it a different Tony in those old videos? No, it's it's still me. So uh, the, the, the I think everybody can relate with that. Are there some times where you're excited and sometimes where you're not? Is there some times where you're happy and sometimes where you're sad? It's, it's not that mysterious. It's not that mysterious. Uh, how about that? Let's talk about some cruise news. So, you know, like Sinatra said, New York, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. And MSC Cruise Lines, they're going to make it in New York. They're making New York City a priority with their flagship cruise ship. That is the MSC Seascape. She will be christened in December in New York City. And guess who the godmother is? This godmother's got more godchildren than Mother Goose, as it were. Sophia Loren, this will be the 18th, 18th uh, MSC cruise ship that she is the godmother of. And look, the leadership over there at MSC, they're happy as punch to be doing some business in the Big Apple. Uh, their executive chairman over there, Pierre Francisco Vago, he points out that MSC Cargo, uh, the Mediterranean Shipping Company, one of the world's largest cargo companies, they've been doing business since 1985 in New York City. And he also he's, he's, he's boasting a little bit that MSC is making inroads into North American cruising. And to be honest, he's not wrong. So uh, be on the lookout, Big Three. MSC is coming for you, and they're doing it New York City style. Congratulations, to MSC, for the new cruise ship, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to see. Uh, that you are valuing the city when it comes to cruising. Will you cruise on the MSC Seascape out of New York City? I'm, I'm tempted. Tempted by the fruit of another. Is that this week's theme song? It could be. It could be. But look, if MSC is not your cup of tea, maybe you love some Royal Caribbean, and I got some Royal Caribbean news for your face. Uh, the Radiance of the Seas coming back into service after two years at the port of Los Angeles, Los Angeles, California. Two-year respite because of the shutdown for the Radiance of the Seas. They now will be loading up passengers, doing a seven-day sailing that will end up in Vancouver so that the Radiance can do an Alaska season. This is the 22nd ship for Royal Caribbean to return, and uh, Carnival's got well over 20 ships back. Also, you know what that means? Cruising's back, baby. And look, if just a single Royal Caribbean ship coming back into service doesn't do it for you, doesn't get you tingly all over, let me, let me do this. Let's try three cruise ships. Celebrity Cruise Line, they got three more cruise ships coming back into service by mid-May. Of course, Celebrity Fleet's not as big as Carnival or Royal Caribbean, but they've already got 10 ships in service. And again, by mid-May, they're going to be adding the Celebrity Eclipse. Uh, that's coming online on April the 23rd, 2022. And as I mentioned in yesterday's show, the Celebrity Beyond, the newest cruise ship for Celebrity, will be coming online on April the 27th. And then on May the 6th, we'll be having the Celebrity Solstice join that Seattle cruising scene. Uh, to kick off their Alaska season. More cruise ships, more cruise ships, more cruise ships. Uh, the, the cruise restart back in full swing. 
and it's dang exciting. I, uh, dang exciting. Let me just say that. Are you dang excited? Is your favorite cruise ship back online or are you still waiting old school by the phone for your favorite cruise ship to call on a Friday night? Uh, what What is it for you? I think my favorite cruise, uh, Oasis of the Seas, my favorite cruise ship's back online. I haven't been on her yet. I don't do the repeat. I got to revisit. Uh, all right. Cruisers, are we fools? We got to talk about that because I, look, the more and more I think about it, we, we, we might be fools. Uh, but first, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like the show, it's a show, y'all. If you like the show, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. Uh, that way you can see the show when it comes out. You can be a part of the notification squad. You can be the first people in the know. You could go to the water cooler. You could chop it up. You could talk about it. All you have to do, subscribe button, notification bell. Uh, that way you don't miss out. Thank you in advance. Hit it. All right. Uh, look, there was a great comment on a video yesterday, and I get thousands of comments, and I wish I would have screenshotted it, but the comment went like this. Hey, I'm booked on a cruise on this cruise line, and they just sent me an email, and they have changed out the port stop of Bon Air, uh, and now we're going to Grand Cayman. Uh, I'm mad. It, it, it bothers me. I feel like I got hit with the old bait and switch. And I think the reason I just liked the comment and moved on is because it's, it's not a shocking scenario. I think if you've cruised for any period of time, you know that when you sign your name on the dotted line, you're signing uh, a contract that says a lot of stuff can change. And one of the things that can always change is your cruise itinerary. When you book a cruise to a certain place, you are not guaranteed to go to that place. Uh, new cruisers, inexperienced cruisers, first time cruisers, you may not realize that, but here I'm telling it to you. When you sign your cruise contract, when you're gonna do that digitally when you book a cruise, you are signing up for all kinds of change and one of those changes is that they can flip-flop the ports on you without much recourse. They can change your ports and you don't have a way to get out of it without paying some sort of penalty. That's the way it normally works. And it made me think, are we fools? Is this the dumbest thing ever? What other vacation type is there where your destination could just change on the whim of somebody else or for the reason given by somebody else? Could you imagine if you booked a cabin in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, you were gonna go there, you were gonna play mini golf, you were gonna look for bears in the woods, you were gonna go to the Titanic exhibit, and then as you're driving your car to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, you get an email from the cabin that you booked and said, well, uh, now you have to drive to Orlando. You would be like, what? No, I'm going to Gatlinburg. That, I paid my money. I am going to Gatlinburg. That's the way land-based vacations, that's the way all vacations work. I, no other time in my life have I gotten an email from my vacation provider that told me I was going someplace else except in cruising. It's a simple question. Do you feel like the ability of the cruise companies to change ports on you, and, and they tell you up front that that might happen and you sign off on it, do you think that's a bait and switch or do you think it's the responsibility of the buyer to know what you're getting into? I'd lean on the, it's like, look, this is what you signed up for. Things are gonna change. It sucks, but yeah, there it is. Or do you feel like that this, this shouldn't happen? Uh, you know, I don't know. Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. You can show your support for the show by hitting the like button. And unfortunately, if you do not hit the like button, I, I have to punish you. That's, that's just the role I've been given. And today's punishment is this. If you do not hit the like button, then, well, uh, Sophia Loren will become your godmother. And every week you have to fly to Italy at your own expense. And you have to sit on her plastic-covered couch and eat green and white ribbon hard candy while she speaks to you in Italian. Is that a punishment or is that a fantasy? I don't know. Fools, not fools. Either way, there, there's definitely 10 things I don't like about cruising. Uh, check this list out. Tell me whether I'm right or wrong. You got to watch this video next. This is Tony for a lot Lido Loca, and until the next time, I'll see you on the Lido. Uh, Arrivederci. <laughs> Bye.